Hey, what's up? This is Reed. As we enter 2021, I wanted to see if the smart home hub I'm currently using is the best one for me, or if I should switch. I didn't want to make my decision from a shiny new feature or what people were saying on Reddit. So I picked seven categories to rate each hub and gave it a score from one to five, five being the highest. I picked some of the most popular hubs, many of which I use all the time, and ranked them based on their overall score. I'll go through each hub and explain their ratings, and just know that these are my opinions, so if you disagree with me, well, you're wrong, but you can let me know down in the comments. Starting off first with smart things. If you watch this channel, you'll know that I've been using this hub for years. It's not perfect, but it's been getting the job done. There have been a lot of questions about the future of smart things, and I'll cover that in a minute. But first, let's go over what they score high on. They're very compatible with other smart home devices. Almost, if not all, Z-Wave and Zigbee devices work with it, including IKEA buttons, Bond, Ratio, LifeX, Lutron, Brilliant, Casa, and pretty much the majority of devices I've covered on this channel. Even Smart Life devices are compatible now, and Nest is going to be available. It's great! Also, SmartThings has very powerful automations. There are smart apps which are pre-built automations, plus an automation section that's highly customizable, and WebCore, which is a smart app that lets you take automations to another level. Another reason I've used SmartThings is that it's very user-friendly. Even if you're barely starting out with home automation, SmartThings is intuitive enough to figure out. So what's not so great about it? Well, it relies heavily on the cloud. The app takes a while to load up, and it can be slow to control devices or run automations if they are not running locally. The main reason people are considering leaving SmartThings is the question of how well it will work long term. If you go to buy a SmartThings hub or sensors right now, they are disappearing quickly and not getting restocked. That's because SmartThings is stepping away from making hardware and instead licensing their software. This means companies like AOTech will make SmartThings hardware instead. In fact, AOTech's hub looks exactly the same. SmartThings has done a terrible job at communicating this, and that's why there's a lot of people panicking that SmartThings is going away. Unfortunately, there's even more changes. The Groovy IDE, which all of the smart apps are built on, is getting the axe. SmartThings is creating a rules API that's supposed to be powerful and replace the functionality of WebCore. I'll put more info and links in an article down below. But basically, the future of SmartThings is a little uncertain, especially with all these hardware and software changes happening over the next year. And in my last Hubs video, I was talking about Wink, and we all saw what happened to them. Now, I don't think it's a reason to completely write off SmartThings just yet. It's still highly compatible and easy to use. But let's look at some other Hub options, and at the end of the video, I'll share what I'm going to do. Next up is Hubitat, which is the go-to choice of many people who leave SmartThings. The reason is, everything runs locally on the Hub, so you're not relying on the cloud to control your smart home. Hubitat is also very powerful at running automations. You can use a rule machine to do just about anything. Plus, you can import WebCore and run that as well, so moving over from SmartThings is not too bad. Hubitat now has a mobile app, so you can control your dashboard remotely, use geofencing, and get push notifications. That's about all it can do, and it doesn't seem like it's improved since being released over a year ago. If you're switching from SmartThings to Hubitat, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. One is compatibility is going to take a slight hit. For example, the IKEA Tradfree buttons do not work with Hubitat since it doesn't use the Zigbee inbound group messaging, so it probably will never work with them. It also doesn't seem to work with devices like Smart Life or Nest. Hubitat works with some cloud devices, but the list is small. If you want to get something like LifeX to work, you have to jump through all of these hoops and it still may have some problems. There have also been some reports of Hubitat not working well with older Z-Wave devices. I haven't run into this myself, but there have been people switching back to SmartThings for this reason. The big issue for me is still the user interface. It's not intuitive, it looks extremely dated, and the bad UI makes it difficult to use. I don't know why they haven't updated this. It has the same design when I reviewed it a year and a half ago, which brings me to the last concern with Hubitat, long-term support. Hubitat has a great community, but what about the company running things? I don't think the business of selling hubs is very lucrative. That's why Samsung is probably fine not selling the SmartThings hardware anymore. And I don't think Hubitat will follow the same path as Wink, but what if the money dries up? 
Having a hub not be backed by a large company could be risky. Even though SmartThings has issues, it may be more likely to be around three to five years from now. If you're like, man, I don't care about five years from now or how the app looks. I just can't handle SmartThings anymore. Well, lots of people switch over from SmartThings to Hubitat and they're very happy. Especially if you set up your automations and you don't use the app much after that, then it might be a great choice for you. But let's look at some more hubs because there are some other good choices as well. With the next hub being Home Assistant. This is an open source project that can run on a variety of hardware. Most people run it on a Raspberry Pi to always have it running while using very little energy. Home Assistant is extremely powerful. Seriously, almost any crazy automation I can think of, Home Assistant has the tools to make it happen. Everything runs locally on the hub, so controlling devices is basically instantaneous. There are even native apps on iOS and Android, and they're quick to use. Way faster than smart things. The interface is also very clean, and it's an entirely better experience than using Hubitat. Home Assistant used to require more scripting, but now you can do a majority of things in the UI, making it much easier to use. Compatibility is great, but it's not perfect. You'll find some things that are not compatible, but if you search online, someone has usually figured out a way to get it connected. One thing to watch out for with Home Assistant is how much time you can devote to it. I would consider myself very technical coming from a full stack developer background, but Home Assistant can still challenge me at times. Once I got it set up, it wasn't too difficult to do basic things. However, figuring out how to get more advanced requires some research. For example, I was able to pull in all of my LifeX scenes, which is great, but I had to edit the scene's YAML file. This was not difficult, but it's not ideal for the casual user. Also, if you want it to work with your voice assistant or be able to control it away from your house, you have two options. You can pay $5 a month for the Home Assistant Cloud or set it up manually, which is not that easy to do. You'll probably hear Home Assistant users say it's the best hub, and they're right for certain types of people. Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Is it the best for everyone? No. Even if you consider yourself very technical, I would watch how much time you can devote to your smart home. Home automation should be fun, and if it ever feels like a chore, then it's not worth it. But if you think you can handle Home Assistant, I would say go for it. It's amazing what it can do, and it's gotten a lot easier to use. Oh, and you can now get the Home Assistant Blue as a plug and play solution now. It's a little pricey, but it's reasonable for the hardware you're getting. Check it out if you're just getting started. The next hub is HomeKit. If you want the speed of Home Assistant while keeping it easy and in the Apple ecosystem, then HomeKit might be the answer. Everything works locally and you can use Apple's cloud to access your devices while you're away from your house. It's the best of both worlds and it's how all hubs should function. Controlling devices from the Home app is quick and Apple makes it really easy to control from your iOS and Mac devices. The problem with HomeKit is that the automations are too limiting. You cannot have multiple if conditions, so you cannot dial in the automations like with the other hubs. This is important so your automations don't annoy you or your family. You can use the Shortcuts app to have more advanced automations, but it's complicated and not ideal. Another area HomeKit struggles is compatible devices. I installed HomeBridge, which allows me to connect devices that are not compatible with HomeKit. If you have Home Assistant installed already, you can use it to activate HomeBridge. It was pretty simple to set up and it works well, but your average Apple HomeKit user probably wouldn't do this. If you're really into the Apple ecosystem and you want to keep things simple, then HomeKit is a decent option. I recently reviewed the HomePod Mini and how it uses Thread, so if that sounds interesting, then check out the video linked above. Another hub that might be worth checking out is HomeSeer. It works locally and people that use it seem to really like it. The main reason I personally wouldn't consider it is the cost. You have to pay for upgrades, which is usually every three to four years, and some of the plugins cost money. However, with the latest update, HS4, most of the plugins are free now. The upside of it costing money means that it'll be supported well. They've been around for 20 years, so they obviously know what they're doing. It's compatible with a decent amount of devices, but not as many as SmartThings or Home Assistant. If you do not mind paying for more reliable software, then I would check out HomeSeer. You can try it out for 30 days if you want. In my last Hubs video, some of you mentioned Vera. So I looked into it and I liked that it runs locally, but some of the negative reviews scared me off. If you're using Vera and you love it, then let me know why down in the comments. 
The Amazon Echo 4th Gen has a Zigbee hub inside. I don't view it in the same league as the other hubs mentioned because of compatibility and how limited the automations are. I'll put more explanation of why link below in the article. The other is the Nest Hub Max. I'm not really sure why they have the word hub in the name. It's an amazing voice assistant display, but it's not a hub. It doesn't make sensors and devices work together. Again, more info down below. All right, now to answer the question about what I'm gonna be using after reevaluating all of these hubs. Well, looking at my own chart and seeing which hub scored the highest, Home Assistant is the clear winner. I've been using it more and more lately and I really like it. I'm gonna use it as my main hub. So I'm upgrading my Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna run Home Assistant on a solid state drive for higher reliability. I'm not abandoning SmartThings, I still really like it. I'm just going to be using it on the side at the same time I'm using Home Assistant. SmartThings is still really easy to use and highly compatible with other devices. Plus it has over 62 million users around the world, so I'm not too worried about it going away. But what if you need to buy a hub today and Home Assistant looks too complicated? I would either go with Hubitat since it's very solid, or wait until SmartThings is available again, which hopefully isn't too long. Any of these hubs could be good for you depending on your home and it's always a gamble of what they'll be like years down the road. Obviously there's other hubs out there and more details when comparing them, but I can't cover everything because of time. Like I said, I wrote down even more info in an article linked below that you can go check out if you want to. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you subscribe to see more smart home videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Look, we need to talk. We're not breaking up, but you're gonna be like my side fling. Don't worry, it's not you, it's me. Actually, no, it's you.